Sparky J. Dog here on the moon. That's right. With everything that's been going on these days, I thought it would be safer to be up here on the moon. That's in spite of the dangers posed by micrometeorite impacts, cosmic rays, and exposure to intense solar radiation. Still safer up here. Oh, and we have a nuclear disposal area that's been on the fritz lately. Uh, anyway, my, uh, my oxygen's running a little low, so, uh, why don't we, uh, go inside? Okay, yeah, let, let's go inside. Oh man, that's better. I, I had to get out of that space helmet. It was smushing my snout. Ugh. Anyway, since I'm on the moon, I thought it might be a good idea to do a movie review of a movie that uses the moon as a setting. There's a lot to choose from. Destination Moon, First Men in the Moon, even 2001, that has like, I don't know, a quarter of the picture is set on the moon. But no, I, I wanted to bring you a movie that you may not have heard of, so I chose the 1970 production of Moon Zero Two. That's right. Now, this is a movie made by the Hammer Horror people, and it's the only movie they made set in the future. And it isn't a horror picture, either. It's set in the far-off future of 2021. Both the Moon and Mars have been colonized, and space travel to those places is fairly routine. Moon Zero Two stars James Olsen, as a once famous astronaut named Kemp, the first man to set foot on Mars. Unfortunately, the corporations that run everything gave up on exploration, and because Kemp didn't want to be a passenger or freight pilot, he works freelance in his old moon ship called Moon Zero Two. He and his partner gather space junk for profit. Kemp is a world-weary maverick and all-around cynical guy who takes no nonsense. Classic tough guy, leading man stuff. He gets an offer he can't afford to refuse from a mega-rich bad guy to redirect an asteroid so it impacts on the far side of the moon so its minerals can be mined more easily and cheaply than it could be in space. This is all against regulations, of course, because of the danger of crashing stuff deliberately into the moon. He also meets a hot chick played by Catherine Schell, who hasn't heard from her brother, a moon miner and prospector, and she's worried about him. Catherine Schell is no stranger to the moon. She appears in a first season episode of Space 1999, playing the mouthpiece of a powerful computer called the Guardian, which threatens the people of Moon Base Alpha. Holy guacamole! Hubba hubba! Mm -hmm. And then... She uh, joined the cast in the second season of Space 1999 as the shape-changing alien metamorph, Maya. She, uh, she's pretty good in this, as is Olsen as Kemp. It's kind of sad. This is one of the few parts he got where he was a main character. Watching him in this, you really get the sense that he could have been perfect as the lead in a series. In fact, Moon Zero Two was rumored to be a pilot for a series, but that all fell through. Maybe a starship captain or commander of a moon base, or the top dog in charge of some secret government time travel project or something. But although he appeared in a lot of stuff, his career never quite caught fire that way. I get the sense the man was a very serious actor. 
So it's a shame that Moon Zero Two seems to have been his zenith. The only other familiar name is Bernard Breslau. He plays a henchman. I didn't, but you might recognize some faces or names if you're an aficionado of hammer horror pictures. Um, the villain is a mustache twirler with a monocle, so not someone you'd take seriously. When that's the problem with Moon Zero Two. There's a serious film hiding under all of the goofy trappings, but they opted for goofiness with this one. They set that tone right off the bat with a cartoon opening credit sequence and a funky theme song. It almost reminds me of the over-the-top wackiness of Italian sci-fi productions like The Green Slime. At times, you can't tell if you're supposed to take it seriously or not. And in the case of Moon Zero Two, that's kind of a drawback. Apparently, they wanted to evoke the Wild West, but on the moon. So people carry stylized six shooters and there's even a Western themed bar on the moon base. And yes, they have a barroom brawl because of course they do. It's kind of embarrassing. This picture would have been much better if they had dropped all the goofy elements. The sets are good, and for the time this was made, the miniatures are quite good too, especially the model of the moon base. I really like the life-size moon rovers too. They look great. The mystery with the brother is all right, and the story moves along at a good pace. Costumes are kind of dated, but that's to be expected. Olsen is very good as Kemp, in spite of some of the dialogue he's given, and Catherine Schell wears a tight-fitting catsuit for most of the movie. Nothing to complain about there. <laughs> so I'm going to give this one two paws up. It really could have been better, but... It's worth seeing at least once. It's fun, and if you look past the goofier elements, it's not a bad movie. If you like sci-fi and don't mind a little goofiness, it's worth checking out. It's on DVD, you can get it on Amazon Prime, and direct from Warner Archive, too. <laughs> Say, uh, if, if you don't mind, could you, could you send me, uh, a little oxygen? Uh, I could use some more oxygen. Seriously. Running low. <laughs>